Hi guys, Groovy Kim here. I'd like to show you how to do Reiki on your dog. I have a teacup chihuahua named Tinkerbell. We call her Tink or Tinker. And anyway, we noticed a couple of years ago that she had a little tumor on the right side of her uh, hip. And um, it was sticking out I'm gonna say about two and a half inches, pretty good size. And so we were really worried about her and we took her to the vet. And um, yeah, it was something they said that wasn't really cancerous, but didn't really have to be removed, but could be. And we thought, well, if that's the case, well, in the meantime, I've learned how to do Reiki and have even earned my third degree Reiki master certificate. And so, yeah, I have been working on her ever since. And I thought I'd share with you uh, what I've been doing. Come on, Tink. Come on up here. Good girl. Good girl. That's mommy's good girl. Oh, she's such a sweetheart, you guys. She brings such joy to our lives. Michael and I love her so much. Mm. Anyway, let me show you. Let me show you her butt. <laughs> Tink won't mind. I don't know if you can see that because I've shrunk it quite a bit. I'll dig out an old picture. You see how it used to look? Anyway, I don't know if you can see that. There's a lump here. Do you see that there? And she's so little that it's kind of hard to tell, but when she's standing up, especially when she's outside in the sunlight, you can really see it. it's much more pr pronounced. So anyway, this is what we do in the evenings. And even when I'm laying in bed and she lays next to me, I'll reach down and put my hand on, on the little tumor and just kind of go night night with it and, and send it love and light, love and light. Yes. All right, lay down. Oh, wait, you're, you're silly. Did you want to play right now? We have to show them a Reiki healing. We can't get silly yet. Come over here. Come over here. Oh, do you want your... Oh, I see. I see what you're up to. Well, come here. Come up here and I'll give it to you. It's called bribery. <laughs> well, come on. Whoa. <laughs> it's too tall for you. I've made her pillow tall for the video so we can both fit in it. Okay. All right. Now, are you going to lay down so we can do some Reiki healing? That's a good girl. The other thing is, I don't know if you can hear her, but she also has asthma. Yes. So now watch what I do. I myself am going to take some slow, deep breaths. You see how she immediately came out of that? Now, it's true, we practiced together. That's right. But by me remaining extra calm and bringing my vibration down, it lowers her anxiety. That's right. That's right. Much better now, huh? And I've got my hand on her chest here. See, I've been kind of rubbing it with my thumbs. That's it. Just kind of go in a little circles with my thumbs right on her chest. And that right away kind of takes her focus off wanting to uh, have that asthma attack. And um, just kind of be calm in effect. Oh, did you drop your bone? Here you go, sweetheart. It's right here. Come up here now where we can, where we can see. All right. What I'd like to start with. Now... Sometimes the dog might, your dog might be a little rambunctious like she is right now. Usually she just lays around, but of course, mommy's making a video, so we've got to be a little silly first. But sometimes you'll need to start at a distance and really just kind of feel their aura. And, uh, and sometimes you need to back up even more, and that's okay. Um, but you just kind of start to feel the energy flow. And if you're an intuitive or an empath, uh, it might come naturally and easy for you. But nonetheless, you have the ability to do this. I promise. Everyone does. It just might take a little practice. That's all. But if you just kind of quiet down a little bit, you'll begin to feel the energy. Now, see, I can feel my fingers begin to tingle. And I'll go ahead and just move in on her. And so she she's used to this 
already, so I go ahead and just put my hands on her. But other doggies may not be used to it, and you may need to start out a little further away in their aura first. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put my hands on her, and I'm just going to kind of give her some soft lovings and tell her, good girl. And this just kind of slows her down. Yeah, all right. Now I'm going to start with a little piece of beautiful rose quartz. And it's just a little itty bitty piece because rose quartz is pretty powerful and she's an itty bitty dog. So I'm going to start with this and I'm just kind of swirl it around her hip area here. And that's the way. And just think of love and light and a beautiful healing light entering into her hip area. And as I make circles with this beautiful rose quartz, I'm going to go ahead and take my other hand, which, by the way, has a wonderful healing amethyst on it. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just hold it over her hip area and just keep moving my hands and moving the energy around like this. Love and light. And it's almost like you're just brushing her aura with the crystals and that um, changes the frequency in her field. You know, when a little dog has a tumor or has asthma or any kind of a disease or disruption in their system, it's because the frequency is off. And you can literally see people's auras now with an electromagnetic spectrometer Right? We can, we can measure this in the laboratory now, and I think that's just amazing. That's just wonderful. When I was a kid, you would say the word aura, and people would say, yeah, right, right up there with palm readers, right? That's the way I was brought up anyway. And, and now that I have studied this and I understand that frequency and all of these uh, crystals, like beautiful rose quartz, they have a frequency, and they really... Are healing to the body not only to humans but to pets and by the way plants too that's right okay so we've got a lot of love and healing and light going on with this beautiful precious little animal I'm gonna bring her back up here a little more into view come here sweetheart just a little more here you can lay down with your bone right here I promise here lay down oh did I disturb you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. And you know, that's another little lesson. It's okay to give them a break. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's not their plan. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Oh, okay, sweetheart. That's the way. And again, sometimes you might need to just back up a little and just kind of get them comfortable again, feeling your energy a little further out. And then you can move in again and just kind of give them love and light. That's the way she's such a sweetheart. Yes, I must be that. I love you. All right. So the rose quartz is going to go ahead and bring lots of healing energy into her body. And I'm going to go ahead and just stroke it all the way down her spine so that we are literally hitting all of those chakra centers. That's right. Dogs have chakra centers too, you know. See? Isn't that a cool chart? Yeah, there's lots of charts on the internet you can find like this, you guys, if you're if you're interested. And um, I can put a link down below too. And yeah, so when you study the chakra centers, you can get even more precise of what of what you're doing with your healing, just like you do on your body. And and they have the same centers, like you would think, right? Yes. Are you gonna get cranky on me, Missy? My goodness. Yeah. Well, that might be another lesson. Don't have a treat or a bone during. Because she feels a little threatened by that. And I just realized that usually when we do this, um, yeah, she usually is just kind of laying there and, and laying around anyway, and she doesn't have a treat. So that's a good lesson right there. When you're trying to do Reiki healing, probably should put the treat away or not have it at the time. Alrighty then. 
I have this gorgeous piece of malachite. Look at that. Now, this is very powerful. And it can actually uh, shrink and, and remove tumors. I have seen lots of studies of people using malachite for cancerous tumors. And uh, it, it's really pretty, but it's very powerful. And again, I don't know if you can see just how tiny it really is. It really is just a little piece. I wouldn't use a big piece on such a little dog. Nope, just a tiny dab will do ya. <laughs> so anyway, what I would do when she's not doing her or eating her little treat right now is I would go ahead and just go in circles around her little tumor and just use my other hand and just hover over it and just draw in the Choco Ray symbol. Yeah, that activates the Reiki. And so we're just gonna do that over here and I'm gonna do it above in her auric field and not touch her right now because she has her treat. So we're gonna go and draw the Choco Ray symbol. Choco Ray, Choco Ray, Choco Ray. And then you just push that in and just hover with your hands and you can feel that energy. You might be learning from this if you ever had a Reiki healing yourself. Um, that's what the practitioner is doing when they're drawing those symbols. They're, they're drawing the Choco Ray symbol. There's other symbols that go, go with this as well. There's the master symbol. There's a long distance healing Reiki symbol. There's all kinds of symbols to learn in Reiki. Uh, but those basic, those are the basic ones that really anybody needs to know. And, you know, to be honest, you don't even need to know any of the Reiki symbols if you don't uh, care to, to learn them. You don't have to because just your healing energy that flows naturally from your hands is enough to heal. Certainly, hands-on healing has been done for thousands of years. Of course, even Jesus Christ did it, right? And he didn't know the Reiki symbols. This is a, a Japanese art. <laughs> so, But it's the same principle. It works in the same way, whether you know the symbols or not. So, so yeah, rest assured you can still heal your pets, you guys. And, um, you know, you don't even have to have Malachite or rose quartz. You don't have to have any of these things. All you have to have, I was going to say, is your hands. But then I thought to myself, well, what if you're handicapped and you don't have hands? You know what? The way energy works and flows, uh, you don't, it, it goes across time and distance, and there is no such thing as time, distance, or gravity when it comes to energy and when it comes to Reiki healing. And so this works regardless, regardless, because the energy flow, the life force, the ki or the chi or the prana or whatever language you want to call it, uh, easiest in English would be your life force, uh, is present in you regardless. It's always been there. It'll always be there. It'll be there after you have your human experience and after little... Tinker here is all done with her little doggy experience. Her life force will continue on. Yes, that's right. And so while we're here, uh, I personally am learning how to direct this life force so that I can have a happier, healthier life and help my pets to do the same. I hope you enjoyed this because when we share love, happiness, and health with our pets, yeah, that's groovy.